Now, I, I want to ask you, Smithy, what do you reckon the biggest news is? Is South Sydney bringing in uh, support for Demetrio? Is it Schuster's departure or is it Zach Lomax's contract situation? Um, well, it, it seems as though um, Jason Demetrio's sort of coaching uh, dilemma at South has been an ongoing thing, right? Mm. So it's not sort of new news, but yeah. um, I guess, you know, reports now of, of someone coming in. Um, so it's Dave Ferner. Yeah. That's reported, isn't it? Yeah. To come in and sort of assist with him there. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I don't know how Jason Demetrio would feel about that because I think, um, you know, he's gone on record to say that, you know, he's confident within himself as a coach and he understands that um, it's a tough job, but he, he believes that he's doing the right thing by uh, the club and his team, um, the work that they put in every week. And he's been backed up by his players. Like there's been players quoted a bit that they say, you know, they love Jason. Um, they they um, they're on board with you know his philosophy with the way he coaches the footy side and what they're about, and you know they just they're just not able to find their best on game day at the moment. So um, maybe that. Oh look, they're, you know they're probably as big as each other really. Like the Lomax thing is huge as well. Um, probably probably not so much him moving because I think that was that was inevitable, but. I guess the ripple effect that that will have at Parramatta is the bigger, the biggest story of the whole event, I reckon. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's so much news to talk about. Uh, Schuster's departure also very, uh, I think it's going to get a bit more messy before it gets better. Very, uh, mm. you know, getting conflicting reports. There's clauses in contracts. No, there's not really clauses, but he could be breached. And then, you know, Gus Gould coming out saying he, you know, he can't talk too much on it, but... He mm. thinks that, you know, they probably couldn't breach him for that full contract. They could breach him for maybe small. I, look, the whole situation is very strange. Um, but I want to talk about the South Sydney bringing in uh, more support, Demetrio, if that's all right okay. with you, Smith. That'll good Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Dave Ferner, David Ferner, apologies. Uh, so he has coached the Canberra Raiders from mm-hmm. 1992 till uh, 2000. The Wigan Warriors. Uh, sorry, this is his playing career. Apologies. Yeah, played uh, them. Apologies. 92 to uh, 2000. The Wigan Warriors, and then he played for the Leeds Rhinos. He also yep. played for Australia. Uh, he played for New South Wales. New South Wales. You know, so we're talking about a guy that you know has a very handy uh, NRL mm. career. Very handy NRL career. Yeah, he, mate. He was actually assistant coach of the Kangaroos um, when I was playing there. Tim Sheens was head coach, and he was assistant coach. So, you know, he he's played at the highest level. He's coached at the highest level, so he knows what it's it's all about. Yeah, and I think that you know maybe the younger generation might be thinking, oh, a bit of NRL maybe, and they might not know Dave Ferner. He's actually he played two hundred NRL games. He's played three hundred and ten mm. professional games. So we're not talking about a you know just an average NRL player. We're talking about yeah. a two hundred gamer. We're talking about yeah. a guy that played for his country. Uh, then you've got his coaching career. Uh, he was coached for North Queensland for a bit. Uh, mm. He was named uh, a coach for Canberra uh, for a bit as well also. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think he's been assistant coaches uh, with a few other clubs. So there's a fair resume there. And I, I know he's not the biggest name in regards to profile These, you know, yes. with this current generation. But there's absolutely a profile. There's absolutely a, a resume there. There's a, a man that has dealt with being a player but also a coach. Uh, and assistant coach of the highest level. What are your thoughts on, first of all, the uh, the appointment of David Ferner, but also do you think it means just assistant? Do you think it means insurance? What do you, what do you think it all means? Oh, look, I, no, I think um, I think it's been a decision made as a collective group, you know, to, to add someone to this coaching roster just to, to sort out or, or to try to improve the way that this footy side's playing. And um, I think we're, we're reading that he's going to come in and, and help um, the defensive part of of the game because they like let's be honest they've leaked a, a ton of points this year, you know. And when you and when we always talk about Campy, you know, the quality sides, the elite teams that are at the pointy end of the uh, the ladder, they they defend well, they defend well. And and South have been there before, but they just for some reason they've um, they're really struggling in that part of the game over the last you know twelve months. You go back to halfway through last year, so. Um, you know, when, when I think of Dave Ferner and, you know, I was, I'm of the age where I actually grew up watching him play for the Raiders mm. and, you know, he was, he was a great, uh, ball runner, um, back rower, um, you know, scored plenty of tries. He was a goal kicker as well, but he was known for his defense. He had a bit of a hard edge about him and, um, knew exactly 
where to be and where to position himself. So he's got he's defensively minded as far as his coaching is concerned, and that was his role in the Australian side as well. So he's t- he's bringing a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge um, to this football side. So you know, over the next couple of weeks, maybe we we might see a a, a slight change to the system in which they defend and um, you know the way they play because there's no doubt they need improvement. There's no doubt. You just you d- you don't have to watch their games, um, you know, to see that. If you look at the points conceded this year for the Rabbitohs, it's it's not great viewing. Like I don't know where they're ranked. Alex might be able to look it up, but um, I don't know where they're ranked in the competition at the moment. But it's got to be pretty low because they conceded. Did they concede? Did they concede 120 points in their first four matches? So. It, it was, as it was something like that, wasn't it, mate? Oh, it was massive. So they, their points differential right now is minus 102, and the closest is the Titans, which is minus 86. So they're not even, you know, it's not even close. It's not even an argument as to, yeah. you know, their differential. And they've conceded 196 points. There you go. Um, compared so, to the Titans, yeah. 146. So you'd say they're, they're ranked last. Yes. They're ranked. By a <laughs> they're, Yeah, they're ranked 17th as far as points conceded. So... There needs to be something done there. And watching a few of the um, line breaks made by the Sharks on the weekend, it was just flimsy defense, mm. flimsy defense. And, you know, like I, I can't say that in a nicer way. Mm. You know, there, there was a there was a break made by um, Braley straight up the middle. And, like, I, I've seen South Sydney defenders with their backs turned to the ruck, um, you know, guys not even sort of half attempting to make a tackle. Like, you've got to be desperate. Oh, when you're defending, when you're defending, you've got to want to make tackles. You've got to want to get your body to the opposition who's opposition player who's got the footy, you know. And and it, they looked, yeah, they, they just look like a a tired footy side now. Maybe a little bit physically tired, but I think they're mentally tired. Given you know the speculation and the all the reports and the and the talk around their footy club and their coach. They, they just look a little bit worn down at the moment. So, yeah, maybe this change with um, Dave Ferner coming in, it just brings a little bit of a different outlook, um, you know, some different sort of messaging around the way they want to attack their footy as far as their defence is concerned, and it might be the change they need. Yeah, in regards to the way they look, and mate, you'd have a much better a grasp on this than me, and look, I'm the first one to admit I'm, I've been guilty of this, but they look like a side of individuals when – they get fatigued. They almost go inward, like individually. They almost yeah. focus. Every man for himself. <laughs> exactly. They're almost focused <laughs> inward Yeah. and going, I just got to get through this for myself instead of, yes. you know, that's why everyone goes, oh, communication's key. You got to talk a lot. Talking a lot, is it? It's, yes, it is for putting people in the correct positions. But a lot of the time, mate, as you know more, better than anyone, it's just about keeping you guys engaged with each other. Mm. So you're not going inwards and focused in on yourself rather than focusing in on the job beside you. Is that yeah. is that a fair statement? Unfair statement? Is that no? No, it's fair because at the end of the day, mate. Like this is um, it's a team sport we're playing, and and you cannot get the job done as individuals. You just cannot. You, you cannot do it. We've seen over the history of the sport. Um, you know, you, you throw together. Um, you know. Uh, a team of champions, they'll never beat a champion team. Mm. It's it's one of the oldest sayings in the game, but that's just the way it works. You know, if you go out there and play as individuals and all you're doing is looking after yourself and worrying about, um, you know, making sure, well, well, that I didn't, I didn't stuff up there. I didn't muck up there. That was his fault. Like, you know what I mean? If you have that mindset, then that's not going to help, help the team outcome. Mm. You got to be able to work together, particularly, like defense, a defensive line does not work when 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 it's every man for himself. Mm. That that's that's something you learn in junior rugby league. Yeah, you know. So these guys should understand that. But you know, as I said, mate, like this it's a it's a new new coach coming in, um, maybe with some new ideas, um, a different outlook on on the way they want to, um, you know, approach their defensive systems or you know the way they work their defensive line and. I don't know. Who who knows? We we might see a, a vast difference over the next couple of weeks in the Rabbitohs' defensive line. Yeah, look, I'm, I I really do believe. Now, I have to be honest, and this is just my opinion. I do think it is a suggestion that he at the moment Demetrio probably is has one foot out and one foot in in regards to the Rabbitohs' leadership administration. They're probably looking at him going, okay, we need to ensure ourselves. 
In saying that, I actually do like this uh, point of attack. I do like the idea of, okay, we're in the middle of a season. Okay, yes, has it been diabolical and the worst, you know, terrible start, all that kind of stuff. It's been terrible. But the season's not over. You know, we're, we're one from four, but there's still a salvageable season here for us. And if we get rid of the coach now, even though I thought probably on his way out um, before the Cronulla game, but if we get rid of the coach right now without any insurance plans, we're basically saying the season's over because I highly doubt you know a rookie coach, whether it's Hornby or even Mal, just to come in and fix everything immediately. I think that'll take some time. I actually don't mind this approach from uh, the Rabbitohs because they're kind of um, killing two birds with one stone. They're bringing in Ferner, who's got experience. He's known as a defensive coach. If if this setup works and it's it's exactly what they needed, great. Demetrio stays on crisis averted if it doesn't they have that insurance of okay a guy that's been around the traps he knows that he knows the business inside out mm. instead of promoting say a rookie in that position um yeah. what, what are your thoughts in regards to signs for the rabbit at the well, moment well yeah well look that, that could be the reason and um the, one of our listeners texted in the red hot rooster he says hey beacon go call me suspicious but is dave ferner's appointment all about having a caretaker coach in the system mm. um just in case they, uh, they decide to let Demetrio go. It, it may well be the case. It may well be the case. Um, because, you know, there was talk around Mao coming in, but he was he was essentially told by the NRL, wasn't he, that um, it's either the Kangaroos or the Rabbitohs. Mm, yeah. So I think he made that decision uh, pretty quickly and he was going to stick with, with the Kangaroos. So, um, yeah, that, that that's him now. But it might be the point. It, it might be the one of the main reasons why they've gone for Dave Ferner is that, you know, he's got NRL experience. He's got experience at the highest level as far as the international footy is concerned. And he's played the game. Yeah. So he understands it. He's got a high level of understanding of how the whole thing works. Maybe he's, he is there just for insurance, but, um, but I think, you know, the way, the way that um, Jason Demetrio has spoken during the week, like it, it sounds as though like he's on board for him to be there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of his quotes was, was saying that, you know, he's really ha- happy to have Dave Ferner joining He's going to add a lot to the coaching staff and most importantly the players. So um, that was that was a direct quote from from JD. Yeah, no, it's look with with Demetrio. Um, I mean, I hope they turn it around. Like no one wants to see a bloke lose his job. No one wants. I mean, that's the worst thing you want in rugby league. So I mm. hope this is is the exactly what they needed. Maybe it's just a uh, an injection of life into like some, bringing someone new in, in the coaching staff. Sometimes can just get a reaction that you may have. Kind yep. of been lulled into. We've got the great Benny Hunt, aka Dozer, on the line. What's going on, brother? <laughs> Not too much, mate. Just a little break in between training. How you going, mate? I'm very good. I'm very good. How's the the, the vibe around uh, the camp at the moment? Obviously, got the win on the weekend. Yeah, it's good, mate. Really good. Uh, it was that sort of our, our first day back at training today. We had a bit of recovery stuff yesterday, but you know, there's a really good feel around the place. Obviously, coming off a, a good, uh, you know, pretty decent win. Hey Benny Smithy here. Um, made three and three for the year. What's um? Well, you just said it's a pretty good feeling after the win on the weekend. But where do you think the team's at at the moment? Just yep. after those first six rounds. Yeah, mate. Oh, obviously, you'd you'd probably like to be above three and three, but um, you know, at this point of the year, like it's you know, it's probably is where we're at. We're a bit inconsistent. Like that probably sums up where we are at. Um, you know, we're good one week and sort of fall asleep the next week. And, you know, that's our biggest challenge going into this weekend against the Warriors, mate, is being able to turn it up and, and do it, you know, a couple of weeks in a row. Mate, uh, what I've really noticed about you guys this year, especially since Flano, like, come on board, and, and I don't mean this, like, rude or disrespectfully in the in the past seasons, but I just felt like there wasn't as much energy, you know, th- making things happen. And I feel like this year, especially when you're playing, there's a lot of punch on your edges, even through the middle, everything seems a bit more energetic. Is that a feeling you feel internally, or or not much has really changed with Flano coming on board? Uh, yeah, it is something that um, you know Flano's really been driving. Is you know talk about that punch on the edges. He's really been riding hard. Like we've obviously got big, powerful outside backs, and he's been right into those guys about starting our set fa- sets fast with lots of energy. And the other thing is like just having energy around, you know, celebrating little wins. You know, if there's you, know, you get an error out of the opposition or, you know, you take someone over the sideline, getting excited and, mm. um, you know, really celebrating those moments. It's something that we probably, you know, didn't do enough of in the past. Hey, mate, um, 
We'll touch on it quickly. Got to ask you the Zach Lomax situation. A lot of chat around him over the past yep. sort of month. Um, now that that's sorted, that can only be a good thing for the squad. Yeah, I think so, mate. And um, you know, to be honest, it wasn't a, a really big distraction anyway. Like, you know, look at Zach's form. He's playing outstanding, so yeah. you can't really say it was distracting him. And um, everyone else was just sort of going about their business. Yeah, there was a, you know, he obviously been around some locker rooms. Everyone's having jabs at him here and there <laughs> about different things. But, um, yeah, like it hasn't been a massive distraction, but it, it is good now that it's settled and we can just all get on with it, you know. Hey, hey, Benny, mate, there's, there's chat around um, Zach actually being selected for the Blues on the wing now. Is he is he yeah. having a bit of a rethink about whether he wants to change posies now that there's a state of origin birth there for him? <laughs> mate, I don't know, but you know, I, I probably would. Uh, <laughs> I, I think he suits it, mate. I really do. Like, I know he doesn't want it. And, you know, I've been there before as well, you know, being playing at hooker. You know, I don't like playing hooker, so I understand where he's coming from. Mm. I don't want to... You know, you want to play your position, you want to play, but yeah. Um, if you've got an opportunity to play for your state, then you know, I'd you know, if I was him, I'd be going for it, mm. mate. Benny, what about yourself, mate? Obviously, you, there was um, you know, in the paper saying you, you were a bit unhappy last year, and things seem to have settled down. Are you, are you fully settled in now? I mean, you're obviously playing some really good footy, but are you fully settled in and, and you're, I guess, enjoying it a bit more now? Yeah, mate, I, you know, I am settled. Um, you know, I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, you know, I'd like to be playing some better for you, to be honest. You know, I was pretty disappointed with my game on the weekend. But, um, yeah, I am settled. And there's a lot of things that have changed, you know, around the club. Um, you know, there was a lot of the stuff last year that I guess was being brought up. There's a lot of things that weren't brought up. And then there was some that were brought up that weren't even true. Yeah. So there's just a lot of speculation around things. But there has been a lot of change around the place. And, you know, there's just... You know, a lot better field on feel on and off the field, and yeah, it's enjoyable. Um, mate, you you just mentioned Origin before. Um, we're about what a couple of months away now. Um, have you been keeping an eye? I know you got you know plenty on your mind with the Dragons, but have you been keeping an eye yeah. on what's going on with the other Queensland boys, your your teammates from the last couple of series, and and the way the Maroons are shaping up yeah. for this year? Yeah, it's really it's you know kind of something you just you know you don't really. Well, I don't anyway go out and really think about what it is, but you kind of just naturally keep an eye on it, you know, and a couple of injuries mm. with guys like Tino and yeah. um, you know, Tommy Gilbert and stuff like that, you know, when that sort of stuff happens, you're like, oh, geez, like, that hurts a lot. So, um, yeah. you know, and you're losing someone like Tino, it's, yeah, it definitely hurts. But, mate, there's some guys that are in some really good form still for us. Mate, uh, heading into this week, what's the, you know, you're hosting the Warriors who have been on fire this year and, and genuinely... Yeah. Uh, I personally think they're a premiership threat this year, so it's a really good opportunity for you boys to kind of measure yourself against close to the benchmark. How are you approaching this game? Yeah, that's a big challenge for us, Kempi. It's you know we had a you know a really good win here at Wynn Stadium against Manly a few weeks ago, and you know we see them as a really quality team too. Or I see them as a really quality team, and you know, the challenge for us is to get up to that same level and play with the same energy and intensity and really just work hard for each other because we know, you know, like you said, Warriors are an excellent side and uh, they're going to be hard to knock over. But, um, you know, if we can match them, I think with our energy in the middle and, um, you know, do all the little things right and like we always talk about, complete high and play the percentages then we'll give ourselves a chance. But, you know, that's the big challenge for us. Mate, you've you've shown already in the first, you know, six weeks, you, you spoke about that Manly game, you can compete with what many people are saying are the, you know, the top tier footy sides. Are you are you searching for um, a finals berth this year? Do you reckon you can do it, mate? Yeah, mate. Well, I definitely think we've got the team that can do it. Um, you know, we, we've shown glimpses of you know what we can do. But like you're talking about, the challenge is the consistency. We need to do it week in, week out. And um, you know, if we can find that, then you know, I really think we are a chance, mate. We've got some quality guys here, and um, you know, I believe we can do it. Mm. Mate, uh, thanks so much for joining us today, uh, honey. I appreciate it, mate, and uh, good luck for the rest of the year. Welcome back to the Captain's Run, and you, I mean, I cannot believe it, and I'm sure our listeners are sitting there mind-blown right now. Not only has the uh, the uh, the Panthers released Fisher Harris from the last two years of his deal, the Warriors have announced a four-year deal starting next season of Fisher Harris joining the club 
I mean, <laughs> this is wow. this is big. This is absolutely huge. What are your thoughts, Smithy? Well, it's massive given, you know, he's played his entire career at, at Penrith and, you know, it's um, it's no secret that he's been a huge part of their, their three-peat. There's no, there's no secret about that. He just came off a season where he won the golden boot, um, where he was judged the, the best player in the world. Um, and he's, he, he was voted, he's been voted prop of the year, what, 2020, 2021 as, as well. Mm. But, you know, it, it, I think it goes without saying that he's regarded by a lot of people in rugby league circles as the best prop in the game currently. So this is massive, massive news, um, moving forward, particularly, you know, you talk about Penrith, you know, and we always talk about, you know, how, how big the, uh, the, the the pool of young players coming through at Penrith are, but, geez, it's hard to replace someone like James Fisher-Harris. Oh, it's just incredible. Mate, uh, Massive signing for the Warriors, though. Oh, the Warriors are Holy. going crazy. They might have a is day it, of celebration in New Zealand. Is there a – well, you know, <laughs> but in saying that, like, we don't, want to, we don't want to show any disrespect to Adam Fanua Blake, too, because he's been one of the shining lights, I believe, for the Warriors – um, over the last 12 months. It's a reason why they went so deep into the competition as well. But um, my goodness. Oh, mate. Oh, absolutely. Did anyone, did anyone see this coming? Mate, this has been kept under wraps. Oh. And yeah, I, I second oh. your thoughts, mate. No disrespect, Adam Fanua Blake. Like, he has mm. been also literally one of the best Dally in front rowers um, mm. and also one of the best front rowers in the game. But mm. yeah, Fisher Harris going to that club. What a huge day. Uh, Warriors CEO Cameron George has said it's a huge signing for us. Undoubtedly. One of the biggest in our club's history. Um, I will say this will be probably the biggest test of the depths of young talent uh, that the Panthers have faced. And why do I say that? It's not necessarily because they haven't been tested before. It's because in the outside backs, usually you can get an 18 or 19-year-old guy that's a gun that's Mm -hmm. kind of ready for first grade to, to a degree, 19, 20, 21. In the front row, though, very rarely... Do you have an 18, 19 year old? And yes, there obviously is Payne Haas, there's Tino's for sure. But very rarely do you have an 18, 19 year old, 20 year old prop ready to go and be the inspirational leader in the middle that Fisher Harris has been. I yep. mean, what a test for the club. What, is, what does this mean for the Warriors? Is there a market on the 2025 Premiership? Oh, mate, it, it's just <laughs> him and Barnett up front. It might be the, the most mongrel they front rowers e- combination <laughs> ever had. My God. My God. What What did you just call them? Mongrels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big mongrels. Mate, they are. They are big mongrels ready to go at the drop of a yeah. hat. Okay, so wow. so for the, for, the, for the Warriors. Oh, actually, we'll talk about the Panthers. Mm. I guess as a Panthers fan, when you didn't see it coming, you didn't have time to kind of, I guess, digest the news. Mm. This is going to be a tough one to swallow because you would have expected Fisher Harris to play his career out at Panthers. You, I mean, I know rugby league is a crazy world, but if there was one player outside of maybe Nathan Cleary, maybe even more than Nathan Cleary, you would have yep. expected Fisher Harris to be there till the end. Yeah, well, he made his debut there in 2016. Um, so he's played his entire career there. And yeah, I, I think, yeah, for mine, I, I, I didn't see him moving. So, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see, not, not that it's any of our business, but um, I could only imagine that it's, you know, for family reasons, maybe that he wants to go back to New Zealand, um, you know, rather than being in Penrith, because there's no doubt that he loves playing for Penrith and um, has, you know, really, really enjoyed representing that footy club and that jersey. You know, he's, he's a very proud Penrith Panthers player. So you can see that in the way he performs every week. It's... Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I'm still a little bit in shock, <laughs> to mate, be honest. I, mate, I am too. I, <laughs> I think I think my biggest concern with Penrith, obviously, you know, you've lost Luai, you've lost Fisher-Harris, you, you know, mm. the list goes on of, of high-quality yeah. players. I guess yeah. the, the the biggest concern I have with Penrith is yeah. I haven't seen anyone fill in and come close to the level of footy that Fisher-Harris has delivered. Whereas when I yeah. look back to Burton, I go, well, they had Taylor and May coming through that we saw with yes. a or Critter, yep. you know, we, we kind of had seen, and then you even look to the halves situation. We've mm. seen them without Luai mm-hmm. get some wins. Whereas yep. 
you know, with Fish Harris, I've never really seen a front row come in and do that yeah. anywhere near the close job that he does. Yeah, they they seem as though they've their stocks for you know particularly sort of outside backs or even halves. They they got high quality sort of young guys waiting in the wings, um, but not so much. You know, those those front rowers, mate. Like they, it takes a little bit to to develop and to mature in those positions. Sure, you can get a young guy that sort of bursts onto the scene and they'll have a few good games, but it's not until they've been around the game for, you know, maybe three or four seasons, they sort of get into their, you know, mid twenties that they're actually, they're, they're hardened in that position. Cause it's the tough, like, let's be honest. It's the, it's the hardest position on the field mm. physically. Yeah. Like absolutely. they're running, they're running into brick walls and then like they're putting themselves in front of all the other giants. And it's, it's a tough game. You don't, you don't, it's not just about the physicality because you know, you see so many young athletes coming to our game. They're big, fast, strong, powerful, you need to be mentally, mentally tough. Mm. So mentally tough to be able to do, not, not just get out there and play in the middle, um, but to be able to turn up every tackle, every run, um, return the ball off kickoffs, every training session, and be at your top like James Fisher-Harris has been for a long time now. Like I'm looking across some of his numbers. From his debut year, well, he played 23 games in his debut year, Kempi. Remember, like playing in the front row, he he's pretty much averaged over twenty matches every season. Yeah, wow. Well. So not only is he high quality, but his durability is remarkable. Mm. Like I'll just rattle them off quickly. So this is games per season from twenty sixteen. Twenty three, fifteen in in twenty seventeen, then he went twenty five, twenty four, twenty three, twenty four, twenty three, twenty three. Wow. Like it's just you know, like so what you what you're buying there is from a Warriors point of view, that's that's value for money. Mm. That's value for money. So basically, you know, we're getting some texts in here. Four-year deal for a 29-year-old front rower. Ain't a great deal. Another text. Four-year deal, $2.7 million for a 29, 29 front rower. Ain't a great deal. Boards, for, boys, forwards especially front rowers don't play till 33 these days. So he's currently still 28. He'll obviously be 29 when the contract starts. Mm. Look, if it's if it is reported two point seven million, that means they got him for six seventy five a year. I mean, I, I I struggle to see how that's a bad deal. He doesn't look like he's injury prone. No. Doesn't look like he's carrying niggly injuries. Yeah, I I man, if you if yeah, if you yeah, I agree with you. I, I think if if he was on a million a year, then you'd maybe question it. Yeah, but um, he he doesn't look like he's he's dipping in form at all. Yeah. So I think it's a great time to to get a hold of him. Yeah, and like, look, it'd be easy in two years' time if he does lose a step or two to then turn. Oh, it was a bad signing, but it's like, okay, let's 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 say the last two years, he injury prone, whatever, but they win mm. a premiership next year. Mm. Do you just go, uh, yeah, we'll cop those two years for yeah. a premiership? Like you've got your return. Yeah, your return and your so. investment, you've got it. Absolutely, and and I mean that's really what they'll be talking next year with Fino. I mean. Even this year with Fenor Blake, they're talking premierships, in my opinion. Mm. Next mm. year, for sure, they'll be talking premierships. You'd have to assume. So I assume the Warriors are looking at it going, okay, first of all, 675K a year. I mean, that's a, a mm. good deal, for one. But yeah. also, if we want to win a premiership with this current roster, we need the best of the best now, right now. Yep. Yep. Um, well, that, 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 that's smart, right? Because they're, they're looking at it going, well, our, our window is open. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people don't like to th- – talk about windows and, um, you know, thinking, well, do we have an opportunity to win a premiership? Do we not? I think it's clear that when you look across the competition, there's there's teams with an opportunity to win it and there's teams that aren't. That's just a fact of life. Warriors are certainly a, a team right now that have an opportunity to win a premiership in the next couple of years. Uh, if you aren't aware, the bombshell that just happened, Fisher Harris has been released from the last two years of his contract. He has signed a four-year deal with the Warriors that starts next season. Mm. What do you think this means for Penrith Panthers in regards to recruitment, Smithy? Obviously, you've got a guy like, I understand Schuster is a very different situation, but there's a guy like Schuster available now. Do they? Do you think that they have to go out and recruit? Mm. Where do you think Penrith stand recruitment-wise? Well, well, I don't know. I'm not too sure what their stocks are like coming through, like props. they got some. They got some good ones. Um, that come off the bench for them um, and have been doing so over the last couple of seasons. But as far as uh, rookies or, or some juniors coming through, I'm not too sure. 
So do they go out and buy one? Do they go out and buy one? Like I, I'm not. We don't know for sure what um, Fisher Harris is being paid or how much space he's taken up on the cap at Penrith. Let's say, I think we're what we're hearing around that 600 mark, mm. maybe slightly over. Who do they go out and find? There's been, you know, there's been talk around around Nelson the Sofa Solomona, mm. maybe not being quite happy in Melbourne, or or Melbourne not being happy with him. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not too sure because he he's a giant. Now uh, we this couldn't have been timed better. Matter of fact, this wasn't even planned. We just have such strong connections. We've just <laughs> called. Charles Nickel Clockstrad straight to his line. <laughs> He's there. Direct line. Direct line. How you going, brother? Hey, sub boys. How's it going? Very good. Mate, what about the bomb? Were you aware of this at all, mate? James Fisher Harris signing for the club for next year. Oh, man. What a signing, eh? Jeez, oh. I, I heard. Um... Heard you boys talking about Nelson too. If he wants to come home, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how good! How good, mate. Uh, I mean, it's just just dropped. Did, did, were you guys made aware of it before the drop, or you heard as when we heard? When when did you hear about it? Yeah, nah, sort of the same time as you boys. It's sort of um, something that's yeah, totally out of out of uh, out of out of the blues. Someone, mm. someone like Fish, pretty hard case because all through Kiwis camp the last two years since I knew I was coming home, I've been trying to approach all the boys in the team, <laughs> telling them to come home, you know, <laughs> all of those sort of things. And it's always, I, I, I always thought it fell on deaf ears, but I, I got one out of 17, so that's a pretty good catch, I think. <laughs> Hey, Charles, oh, that's like, a pretty big you... fish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, come, that's just come from someone in the background. I heard them. That's from one of the other boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charles, um, mate, we are just talking about, um, you know, we wanted to you know, show no disrespect to AFB because he's been unbelievable for you guys over the last couple mm -hmm. of seasons. But um, you've known now for quite some time that he's leaving the club. Did you ever think, though, he was going to be replaced with – someone of the quality of James Fisher-Harris. Yeah, no, I've got to give massive respect to what Adam's been able to do uh, for the Warriors team and what he's continue, continually doing as well week in, week out. And always, always going to be big shoes to fill. And mm. I thought maybe with what was out there, um, you know, forwards-wise on the market and everything else, we were probably going to have to bring one of the young boys through and yeah. try and get him to to sort of fit into that role that he has in our team. And, um, yeah, getting someone, um, you know, in the likes of Fish, you know, he's, he's the current Kiwis captain, the way he holds himself, the professionalism and everything else. It's, you know, it's it's someone that fits um, right into to, um, Adam's mould. Mate, uh, speak about some of the, the younger forwards you've got coming through. You know, obviously me being deep into the game, I'm aware of like guys like Laban and, um, I think Zion as well. I know he's. I don't know if he's still suspended, but yeah, that trial. I mean, you got you got some probably some of the best young forwards coming through. What, what's someone that uh, has really impressed you this year? Some of the young fellows. Yeah, I think you've hit hit it on the top of the head there with those two. Um, those two boys are probably the ones that have impressed me the most, uh, in particular Jakey. And these these no surprise that uh, Jakey's. You know, he's in the team for the third week in a row now and he's he's deserved his opportunity. He's worked really hard, um, head down, bum up. We always see him in, um, catching up with coaches, cutting clips, and he's he's really set the platform for all those young boys coming through. And it's it's pretty um, hard case because all those boys are still, still kids. Man, I think a lot of them are still mm. uh, 20s eligible or 21s eligible. Uh, which is crazy. So the the future of the club is in good hands. Hey, mate, what about yourself? You had the hammy um, issue at the start of the year, so you missed the start of um, the 2024 season, but you've been back a couple of games now. How's the body? And um, what are your thoughts on the way the team's travelling? Yeah, it was a bit of a, um, you know, something that you can't con sort of control injury-wise and just had to get yourself ready and prepare as best as you can for uh, for your return to footy. And, um, yeah, really enjoying being back in the squad. Uh, this is the third week this week. Body's 
holding up all right, which is nice. Um, <laughs> just got to front load the recovery and um, mm. just look after all those things that I can. And yeah, really stoked with how the boys um, have been going. Sort of a lot of really good lessons coming week in, week out. And um, yeah, probably the weekend we we're all pretty disappointed because we were quite patchy with getting our, our game on and there were moments there when we did get our game on we were, we were quite hard to stop so uh, I thought the refereeing performance was pretty poor a uh, lopsided penalty count in particular in the area of uh, uh, the 10 or 6 against the 1 yeah, some of them uh, you know it just leads to uh, yeah, just you know, just battling field position the whole time he's on, a, he's on another planet mate if he's critical of the six agains and the penalties, he's on another planet. I just said he coached well. Him and Whitey coached well. But the way they cheated with the, when they were standing there with hand on the ball, holding over the ball, the way they cheated on the ground. If we want to go back to last year, or the years we've had, no worries. We'll start wrestling and we'll start cheating up high too. The game's been going real good without that type of um, wrestling ruck. Wow, we woo. Holy moly. There you have it. Ricky Stewart goes bang. Now, did the journo just lay up for him and just say, please slam dunk this, Ricky? And Ricky said, I will slam dunk that. I will absolutely <laughs> slam dunk that. Um, oh. Okay, so it should be noted. This is uh, – uh, okay. Um, so Bulldog Richie is reporting, um, you know, uh, multiple, multiple sources in GIA Stadium – uh, mm. claim that after speaking to the media, has the walk down the tunnel under the Malmeninga grandstand and waited outside the Raiders' dressing room to tell Stewart what he had said. Inside, Stewart was having a beer with club officials when told Hasler, a teammate of his in 1990, the 1990 Kangaroo Tour, was waiting outside. In the hall, Hasler told Stewart what he had said to the media and the comments clearly upset the Raiders coach, who, according to witnesses, said, F you, we should have got another 15 6 again. I'm going to go hard in there. F and you. He dropped the F-bomb. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Graham Annesley is in the media. A briefing on Monday said that Chevy Stewart was a good me metre off site when mm. charging down Foran's drop goal attempt, yes. which is yes. interesting because didn't we just inter introduce a ridiculous new thing where drop goals are reviewed, but we'll get to that. Yes. That was an error and should have been picked up by the touch judges monitoring the 10 metres, uh, he said on Monday. This is Annesley. Annesley said referee Casey Badger should have signaled six more tackles but if that had happened and Foran still attempted the field goal, the Titans likely would have received a penalty right in front of the post because they did not get any advantages. It's uh, mm. time for the good oil, thanks to Cobham Estate, Australia's most awarded extra virgin olive oil, grown, harvested, and first cold pressed in northern Victoria. Give us some good oil, Smithy. What do you well, think, mate? Oh, it's a good old little barney, isn't it? A little Ooh, yeah. stoush between two veteran coaches. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, well, good on Desi for actually knocking on the door of the Canberra Raiders and telling Ricky, hey, mate, look, this is what I've said. Just giving you a heads up. So I reckon Sticky, mate, he was he had the loaded gun. Oh, man. It was locked and loaded when he walked into that press conference. He knew exactly what he wanted to talk about. He just needed the right opportunity. He just needed the perfect time, the perfect opportunity just to unleash on, uh, well, on, on, on a response that he wanted to give for what uh, Des had spoken about uh, in his press conference, um, given the Titans coach went first. Um, I don't mind it. I actually don't mind it. It's a bit of, bit of banter, a bit of chit-chat. I think um, Ricky spoke about, you know, the, the Titans cheating at the ruck. Now, what he means by that is just buying time or slowing the play the ball down. I think that's what he's referring to as cheating. It wasn't not accusing the Titans of actually cheating in the match, but um, it was funny to hear him talk about, uh, I know exactly what Des is doing up there. I'm, you know, I know exactly what Brett White's doing. Brett White was the assistant coach at the Raiders for several years. <laughs> so wouldn't he, would he have not been doing the same thing at the Raiders <laughs> previously? This is his second season at the Titans. I'm sure I know Brett White quite, quite well from um, his time at, at the Melbourne storm. And look, he, he was, he was a very, very good defensive uh, front rower. Um, yeah, well, he was a great all-round player, actually, to be honest, um, as tough as they come. But he understands, you know, so he has a strong understanding of how to slow the play the ball down and, and how to defend properly. So I, I could only imagine he was, he was training, coaching, practicing the same things at the Raiders um, that he's doing now with the Titans. So, um, 
yeah, a little bit. I had a bit of a, a chuckle to myself when I heard Sticky talk about that um, because I'd, 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 I'd imagine I'd be quietly confident that they were practicing the same things when Brett White was coaching at the Raiders. But, uh, yeah, uh, well, it, look, it's it's another one. Like comments from Graham Ensley saying, oh, look, there could have been more six agains given the more set restarts. Isn't that the case every game? Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, really, like, if you look at every match, you go, okay, that team just got a set restart, right? The very following set of six when the other team has the ball, you go, well, that was a slow play of the ball, just like the other one. Yeah. That could have been a six again. They, yeah. they, you, could give, you could give 50, 100 more set restarts. That's why I don't like the rule. I hate the rule. Mm. Because that, that, is, that, is, that is every game that's played every week. Every week you could give 40, 50 more set restarts. It's just when the when the referee decides to give them is is what happens, and and sometimes we have that situation where, what was it ten to one, was it ten to Canberra one to the Titans I think set it was, restarts? Yeah, something like nine. I think overall like nine to two. I think something like that. So, so it's quite yeah. quite substantial. Yeah, a bit of a difference. And you know what? what like when you're getting that many more sets, um, it can it can take its toll, um, particularly when in, when a game goes to the golden point. But um, yeah, the the one and and I'll let you take this on Kempi was what you raised around um, the field goal attempt by Kieran Foran, which he missed. But, you know, Graham Mansley has come out and said, yeah, um, Chevy Stewart was offside. It should have been a penalty. Yeah, look, it's, uh, it's, it's, almost, um, it's almost like this disrupt, disrupt the rule, which I hate. Far out, I hate that rule so much. Um, this, this, we come out with a rule at the start of the year that field goals could be reviewed, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the first opportunity they get to use it, they don't use it. Uh, very strange. Oh, very strange. Um, and look, I think uh, Ricky was quite passionate calling them cheats. Mm. Uh, that is uh, quite extreme. That's quite extreme, especially if you, you could probably go through the Raiders game and see hands on ball, yes. certain tactics used to slow the ruck down. Now, does that mean that the Raiders are as bad as the Titans? Not necessarily, no. but at the same time, it's still the, the same use techniques. Yes. And I think yeah. that like people need to understand in sport, like teams have no obligation to follow the rules. The ref just has an obligation to enforce it. You know, like That's right. the mm. team's obligation is to win. Uh, yes. You know, yes, within a certain rule set, but they're not obligated to follow it. Um, and so, yeah, like look, Desi, if they did go in with a plan of trying to slow the ruck down, it backfired. It backfired. Mm. Um, mm. And so, you know, that's just part of rugby league. It's about, you know, how often. I don't know about you, Smithy, but before going out in some games, we were told to hold down early in the in the game yes. to, to test where the line was with the ref. Yep. And so sometimes test them, out. test them out. Like sometimes fans go, "Oh my god, a penalty in the first five minutes!" It's because the players sometimes I can't speak for other teams, but when I was playing, it was like, "Guys, I want you to lie on as long as you can. We get we cop that first penalty. Okay, that's where the standard is, and we move from there." Um, but I'll be honest, like, yeah, you know, for all of our listeners out there. Every team is doing pretty much the same thing, yep. right? They train the same thing as each other. They go out and try to do the same thing. Like you look at all the set plays that teams put on. Yeah, there might be little variations to you know different clubs on the weekend, but they're all they're all putting on similar plays, um, you know, similar set structures in their attack. They do the same things in the play of the ball and the way they tackle. You know, two men up top, someone comes around, chops the legs, put them on the ground, slowing the plate all down. It's just that some teams do it better than others. Yeah. That's all it is. Yep. That's all it is. And if you look over the last three years, that's been the Penrith Panthers. They do everything that they do, they do it better than everyone else, which yep. makes them the best side. There's other sides out there trying to do what they do, but they just can't, whether it be through, um, you know, the way that they practice it, the way that they try to implement it on the weekend. Um, you know, sometimes it's it's to do with squad or rosters, um, and the quality of players being able to sustain that that high standard of what they're trying to do. But at the end of the day, every team is doing the same thing. Yeah. Just some do it better than others. And like, how often do you? Okay, so there might be a week or two where a new tactic is in, introduced, and then every other club's doing it. Like, it's there's no clubs that sitting there going, "Oh, that was a really smart tactic that they keep getting away with." We're not going to do it, though. We're, we're not going to do it, though. Like, come on. Everyone's trying to win here. Now, as you said, yeah. yes, there are some teams that are better than others. Like, For example, there's one thing that the Panthers do unbelievably well, and this isn't even illegal. This is legal. Mm-hmm. But they, they hit, they win that first contact, 
and they don't take the defender to ground. They actually hold them up and drag them and turn them around to their own, yes. own goal try, try line. Slower play the ball. It slows the ruck down, but it's not necessarily wrestling. It's it's winning the contact. And so mm. you're actually, you, you don't get pinged as much as you do for, you know, let's say you, you take him to the ground and then you start wrestling. You're going to get pinged every time nowadays. Yes. Ponger, Walsh. Where do they go? How do they fit? Is it one or wow. the other? Or could they fit in the same side? What are your thoughts, mate? Well, mate, it all depends where they're at in six weeks' time, right? Mm. You, and exactly what Billy said there. Like, it's – yes, it is approaching us um, quite quickly, but a lot can happen in that time. Like, we, we see week to week, can be how oh. much can change. Like, have a look at the James Fisher-Harris thing this morning. Yeah. We didn't know that was happening. That just exploded onto our desk. But – um. Yeah, a lot can happen. So I think as as an origin coach or anyone coaching in a rep team, particularly origin because it's mid-season, right, you, you really can't sort of put anything in, in concrete right now because, you know, there could be injuries, there could be suspensions, um, there could be a, a dip in form which makes you think, you know, you might go in a different direction with particular players. Um you know, so with with the Kalen Ponga thing, like there's there's no doubt, like he's playing extremely well at the moment, extremely well. Um, you know, it's the main reason why the Knights have been in the games that they've been in and and won those couple of games that they've won is because of you know what he's providing for them. Like he played half a game last week with a hip pointer, which is um, extremely painful. I'm told I've, I never got one, but. Um, yeah, he pushed through it and and nearly and nearly jagged a win for them, um, playing with with that injury that he had. So, you know, he's a quality player, and he has showed in the past what what he's been able to provide for Queensland. So, I think you know, listening to Billy talk there about not not putting a line through anyone, um, and and he's more than happy to 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 be a little bit unorthodox or think out of the out of the box a little bit as far as selections are concerned. I've got no doubt that he'd do that because that. That's the type of player he was too, mate. He's always thinking of ways to be a little bit different. He's thinking of ways to get a little edge on the opposition um, and thinking of ways to stay ahead of the game. That's that's what the good coaches do. They don't just go along with the flow and and hope you know what they're doing will be good enough. They're always looking at ways to be better and be the best. Um, where do you fit him in? I'm not too sure. The hardest thing for, for Caelan Ka- Ponga is that this Queensland side, they've won the last two series. Um, and, you know, I know I've just finished saying that, um, you know, you're always looking to get better. But sometimes changing up a squad when they've got a little bit of cohesion going already might not be the best thing. Um, I look at I look at my time in that Queensland side um, that went on a bit of a run. You know, we were lucky where we didn't have to make too many changes. A lot of our guys stayed fit. Um, there were no long-term injuries. Um, if there were changes made, most of them were around injuries that were forced. Um, so how do you fit a Kalen Ponga into a side where you've got already Reese Walsh, uh, Munster playing six, you know, Ch- Daly Cherry Evans, no one's going to take his spot at seven. Um, and then you've got Ben Hunt and Harry Grant. So to, ca- to carry KP without someone, you know, being injured or unavailable for some reason, um, I don't know. I just I don't think it will happen. Not for game one, at least. What I love the most is about Queensland's kind of selection policy for quite a while now, and you even heard it in the way Billy was talking. Mm. That at no point in that conversation, when he was kind of giving his explanation, did you hear, you know, whoever's playing better. It was always mm. who suits Queensland better. And I do think that, that that's probably where Queensland have the, had the upper hand on New South Wales at the selection table is yep. how many times, especially during the dynasty that you were a part of and, and led, you know, there'd be a guy, you know, Nate Miles, and no disrespect to Nate Miles, but he'd yeah. be the Titans, yep. mate, and he would be struggling. Like, you yes. just wouldn't be, you'd just be struggling. But yep. you guys knew Nate Miles suited exactly mm. the game plan that you guys wanted to, to go with. Yeah, that's a good point, mate. And, and even... You know, you, you think of one of the greatest players to play our game, Jonathan Thurston, and and uh, a handful of his Cowboys teammates. Like they were coming in, they were coming in from a club side that hadn't won a game of football in say three or four weeks. Mm. You know what I mean? So things weren't weren't going great in clubland for them. But you know, you just knew that they were going to get 
the job done for the Maroons when when they come into camp. Um, so that that's been the way of of the Queensland side, you know, over the, over the period of time that um, you know I played and, and represented Queensland, and even beforehand, um, you know. So I, I think Queen, uh, I think Billy wants to uphold that that sort of that way of thinking um, as coach now. So the the biggest question mark for me will be, um, you know, if Cam Munster can stay fit. We, we've heard from him um, in a post-game interview, uh, might have been last week or, or possibly the week before, where he spoke about, you know, that, that groin or, or hip injury that he's uh, managing at the moment that, you know, he's not at 100%. And it's just, it, it really is a, a day-to-day proposition where, yeah, you know, he's just got to get through training and do his best day to day to to feel good. Mm. Um, you know, you you can tell he's not a hundred percent fit. Yeah, you know, like he's doing his best out in the field at the moment, but you can tell he's not a hundred percent fit. But um, you know, things as I said before, mate, things can change quickly. And and what are we two months away from from the first Origin? We'll just have to see where where Cam's at with his with his hip or groin situation. If it's not good. And it's not it's not good enough for him to to get through a week of training. I, I think Billy wouldn't have any such, uh, hesitation to bring KP in and, and possibly play in the halves. Roosters host the Storm for probably much of the round. Live on SEN, Joel Kane, Brett Kamali, and Spud Carroll will be on live on SEN. Roosters team news: Tedesco returns, Manu to the centres, Suwali'i to the wing, Tupanua out with concussion. Sam Walker moved to the reserves. Very interesting. Storm mm. Team News. The big man, Nelson Asafa Solomona, has returned for his first NRL game of the season. Kamakamitha is out with a calf injury. Smitty, what do you reckon, mate? How are your boys feeling or what? Well, l- slightly nervous, um, given the way that that game finished the other day against uh, the Doggies at home. And again, it's just. Struggling to just to put teams away, the Storm at the moment, and they need to be a little bit concerned traveling to Sydney against um, the Roosters. Who, well, look, it, it it wasn't a pretty game the other weekend, but they had a strong victory against the Knights. Uh, no Tedesco, Joey Manu was just unbelievable <laughs> playing fullback, but he goes back to centers. Tedesco returns, of course. Um, interesting to see how big Nas goes. Yeah. First uh, NRL match for him this year. Um, of course, been uh, struggling with a little bit of a hammy issue, but he's he's in. Um, would have loved to have seen him with that combo between him and uh, Tui Kamikamita, uh, the two big boys. Just um, you know, putting their their stamp on this match, particularly against you know some of the forwards that they're coming up against the, the Roosters. I, I think if they if if they play their best game. I think the Storm can win it, but they I don't know if they've put together an 80-minute performance this year as yet. They've put together, you know, some 50, some 60-minute performances. Um, but, yeah, I just – if they, they need to put together an 80-minute performance because if they have a lapse in concentration, this, this footy side can score points quickly, the Roosters. Yeah, with the Storm, I, I totally agree with you in regards to they haven't put together 80 minutes, but also – Lucky is absolutely the wrong word. They haven't gotten lucky because they have fought their way back into matches to win matches. Yeah. Yeah. But they have had a tendency to rely on big plays in big moments. And during the season, and it's look, it's great that they've proven they've got players that can do that. Because that's in finals footy, you need players that can have big moments. But during the season, as you know, mate, like you can't be relying on big plays to win matches. You need to rely on your systems. You need to rely on set after set, you know, building pressure. And so I think with the Storm, like, obviously you wouldn't have wanted to lose to the Bulldogs. That's, that's crazy talk. But I almost feel like they needed at least close to a loss to wake up a little bit and go, boys, we're not as good as we probably are sitting in a – oh, that's, that's not right. They are a top-tier side. But we're not playing as well as we should be. You know, even though we're second on the ladder and things are going well and we've beaten the Warriors and we've beaten the Broncos – we yes. probably should be a bit better Beat than Penrith. we are. Beat, yeah, there you go. Beat Penrith. Yeah, well, I reckon you've you got to go all the way back to round one, mate, to, to see their best performance of the year. Now, it was only 8-0. Mm. Right? It was only 8-0, but that was their their most consistent or strongest performance of the season. Um, go back, or, or sorry, you, you move on from that. Mm. They, they had to come up with a miracle 
um, against the Warriors. They, they were gone. They, they needed two tries in the space of three minutes, and they did it. Um, still don't know how that happened. Mm. But they win it. They then lose to Newcastle, albeit, you know, they were down a few key players, um, but they go down to Newey. Then they have one of the stranger games of, of the year against the Broncos, where they where they just snuck home by two, and they scored some, um, you know, how do I put it, like t- a couple of tinny tries. <laughs> a couple of tinny tries, you must say. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and hold on by two. And, and again, they were taking on a, a, a understrength uh, Bronco side. You've got to remember they, they played them for a full half without Adam Reynolds. Mm. That's when that's when he injured his hamstring. Yeah. And then last week they just hold on against the Bulldogs where it was another scenario like the Warriors where they had to they scored late to win it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a great charge by Sean Bloor on the left edge to to score the, the winning try to to get home against the Bulldogs. So um I'm sure Craig's extremely happy with the wins. Um, they've been tough. They've been gritty, but I, I just I don't think he'd be happy with the way they're playing at the moment. I I I couldn't see him looking at their performances and saying, "Look, we're we're playing great footy at the moment. Um, we're playing smart. We're doing everything that we we've planned to do." So in, that's why I'm saying this is this is a danger one for them. Mm-hmm. If they go up there and play like they have in the last couple of weeks, it it might result in a in another loss. The Dragons v Warriors, 6 p.m. Friday night. Uh, Dragons paying two dollars eighty. Warriors paying a dollar forty-four. <laughs> big, big game uh, for both teams. Uh, Dragons yeah. obviously get things uh, back on track, and the Warriors looking to kind of cement themselves as a real premiership heavyweight. Now, Dragons, as we heard earlier, they did put Manly to the sword, so it's not with you know it's not not in their power to be able to go well against a top tier side. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? Yeah, well, they're not going to fear taking on the Warriors, are they? Um, as you just mentioned, mate, because they they knocked over Manly. Although Manly didn't play all that great, they were far from their best. Uh, Warriors, though, they you know, they're a high quality outfit. High quality outfit. Um, they fought back um, very bravely to to fight out that that twenty two all draw with Manly on the weekend. Um, and I think they'll be they'll be looking at this next little period over the next few weeks to really try and solidify their spot on the ladder. Yeah, if they play, if they play anywhere near their best, I think it'll be too good for Dragons. But the Dragons are, are a footy side that just you know on their day they can they really can, um, you know they can they can match the good sides. Lomax back in the centres with uh, Jack Bird out. That'll, that'll be interesting to see how he goes. That's, that's his preferred spot. He has been playing extremely well on the wing. Uh, but I've just, yeah, I, I've got Warriors. I've got Warriors ahead on this one. Yeah, look, it's an interesting one because I do think the Dragons have actually a, a quite a decent game plan uh, that does, that may trouble the Warriors. And it is the fact that I've noticed that they've been really good at getting their wide running forward into the game and hitting uh, and basically going from three to three defender. And for listeners, three defender is usually your half. So yep. there is a, a world where Dragons, if they're on and they complete at a high rate, that he's going to be have to be tackling, I think, uh, would it be Sua? If it's not Sua, it's yep. Leilura, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Sua is in incredible form. Leilura is um, obviously a big, big boy. And so if they can execute that and fatigue SJ, there is a pathway to victory uh, that, that, you know, it's a, it's a reality for the Dragons because if you yeah. take SJ out of that side, you, you mm. can get the win. Yeah, well, Jaden Sewell is going to be um, starting one side. I think it's uh, Raymond Fatella Mariner has been named on the, in the other um, back row, Kempe. So, yep. yeah, big game. Um, yeah, oh, look, you know, there's quality in this Dragons outfit. They've showed us this year that they can compete. Um, they really need to hold on to the footy, though. If they don't hold on to the footy, like every other footy side in the competition, but particularly this team here, it's going to make it hard for them because they're just – they are so potent with the football, the Warriors. You give them a sniff. Um, they've got quality all around the park. They've got great front rowers. Um, you know, we, we just spoke with Chance and Neil Clodstad about the way Wade Egan's going at the moment. Like he, He's carving teams up in the middle. At the moment, quick play of the balls, loose defence. He's away, and that just brings Johnson into it. It brings Nickel Klogstad into it. Yeah, they're just very formidable when they get a roll on. So um, they're going to have to be tight with the footy, tight with their defence. I've got them edged ahead, though, uh, the Warriors. 
Yeah, what I'm loving about the Warriors game is is their ability to stay patient in footy matches. And I think last week was a really good example of that. They're 16-0 down. They didn't panic. They stuck to their systems. Four, four hit-ups, a kick from SJ. Do it again. Four hit-ups, a kick from SJ. And that's what I'm liking is that, as you said, if you give them a sniff, mm. they'll keep you down your end for 15 minutes. And before you know it, you haven't touched the ball for 10 to 15 minutes because they do play... Although their attack is very exciting to watch, it actually is quite structured. It actually is, um, you know, you look at, say, for the Broncos, for example, although they have structured attack, a lot of that is basically like spin it to someone and then let's just see what happens. Yes. Uh, whereas the Warriors is very much let's get to certain positions on the field and then exploit uh, different, uh, I guess, holes or, you mm-hmm. know, lazy defenders. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm with you, mate. I, I do give the Warriors the edge in this game. Uh now, uh, Eels versus the Dolphins. Uh, now, Eels Steve News, Talangi recalled. He will stay on the bench. Sivo still in reserves after a double in New South Wales Cup last weekend. The Hammer, he's out with the Hammy industry. Trey Filler is in at fullback. Second NRL game. Plath returns for suspension. Stone to the bench. Sean O'Sullivan replaces a suspended Anthony Milford. How do you mm. see this one playing out, mate? Yeah, Anthony Milford. Two weeks, did he? Two weeks for the hit on Walsh. Yep. Unnecessary contact. So, Sean O'Sullivan, he's back in the footy side. First time back since round one. Wow. I think it was. Yeah. Um, after their first up loss, he was put back to Reggie's. Um, this one is being played in Darwin, Kempe. Mm. Um, so, yeah, a little bit different for these footy sides. Different conditions. It's going to be hot and muggy, steamy, more than likely raining. Um, I think Eels. I think Eels. No hammer. No hammer. As soon as he come from the field last week against the Broncos, um, they just looked a, a completely different footy side. Mm. Now, I know you could say that about every every team, um, but he is so important to their attack. Like, he's, he's that much of a threat. Um, it, it's like Broncos without Walsh, right? They're a completely different footy side without the speed out wide. Um, they just they have to come up with a different way um, to play their footy and to try and find points. So... I think they may struggle a little bit without him. Uh, they will have a red hot crack like they always do, um, the Dolphins. Um, but I reckon Wayne would have been pretty disappointed with their effort last week. Um, the amount of drop ball that they they come up with, I think they had eighteen errors, mm. which is just that's you know you cannot you cannot turn the ball over that many times and expect to be in the footy game. But um, yeah, I'm going Eels. Mm. I got Eels. Um, I like I like the uh, the fact that Blaze Talungi's been recalled. He's coming off the bench, of course, but he's a he's a he's an exciting young man. Um, I think they'll be too good. Yeah, Darwin. I think that's going to look. The Eels beat a Cowboys team that almost beat themselves. Uh, even though the Eels showed a lot of fight, and you know they definitely did play better than the week before. I do think uh, Dejer and Arcee is a good combination with Brown, at least better than having a rookie with him. I, I look, I I'm going to go Dolphins for the upset. Um, oh, yeah. Look, I think that if they can just play a very simple brand of footy and hold the ball, yes, I think the Eels may struggle with that because again they beat a Cowboys side that you know the amount of errors that they were making and yep, it just and also silly errors they didn't need to make. That look mm. being expansive footy for the Cowboys, it has worked, so it's hard to knock it. But at the same time, they're they they having a risky. Bit, it's, it's risky. Risk. So you're going to make some. Sometimes it's going to be, you know, Globetrotter and it's going to be great and everyone's yeah. going to love it. <laughs> and then other times it's going to be like, what the hell just happened? So mm. I think with the Dolphins, if they play a very simple style of footy and look yep. to just grind them out of the game in Darwin, so that's probably going to be a little bit hotter. The ball's going to be mm. a little bit slipperier. Mm. That may be, a, a, I guess, a pathway to victory. Well, I reckon, I reckon, Kempi, there's no doubt that that's the way they'll play. That They'll come out with a simple game plan like they did in round two, right? So they were awful round one with their ball handling, got beat. I reckon Wayne Bennett would have gone back and said, hey, listen, boys, what, we got exactly what we deserved today. We didn't show respect to the football. We didn't want to hold on to it. So you can't win footy games without the ball in your hands. And you know what they did in round two? They come out, finished with a completion rate of 92%. Wow. 92%. So I reckon that's a, what we'll, a similar performance we'll see this week against Parramatta. Um, taking that into account, though, I just think, yeah, I just think no hammer takes a, a lot of their um, potency away from their attack and their sc- try-scoring ability. 
Um, a lot of tries are scored by him and around him by the things that he does. So I've got the Eels edging them out. Welcome back to the captain's run. Let's go straight into it, shall we? Panthers host the Tigers at 3 p.m. at Carrington Park in Bathurst. Um, <clears throat> Cleary still sidelined with a hamstring mm. injury. Expected back round eight. Luai named despite leaving the field with a knee injury last weekend. Sorensen returns from an injury. Uh, Taylor May cleared to play after, uh, yeah, I mean, posting a video of himself of someone speeding in the car that he was in. <laughs> he wasn't driving, but he's mm. been cleared to play. Uh, West Tigers team news. Galvin returns for suspension. Naden joins the centres. Bateman back from concussion. And Latu and Samuela Fainu both return from suspension on the bench. What do you reckon, Smithy? Yeah, look, I've I've got Penrith. Um, I've got Penrith in this one. Great to see Lockie Galvin back. Um, he set the NRL alight, didn't he, the young fellow, in his first few games, and then he's missed a couple from a suspension, and they, they've they gone loss-loss without him. Is that right? I think yeah. the last couple, haven't they? Yep. So great to have him back. Um, I think they'll be a much improved footy side with him back in the, in, in the team. Um, Benji, he didn't miss him last week, eh? No. He spoke about how disappointed he was with the way they played and how, you know, at the start of this year when he took over as, as full-time coach that there was standards set mm. and, you know, what would be acceptable, what would not be acceptable. And he said they were well below our standards that we spoke about. So that was disappointing for him. I think I think up to that point, I think he was pretty happy with, you know, the, the, the way that they've played all season. Um, so, you know, you'd like to think there's a bounce back coming this weekend. Battle of the West, but I think Penrith particularly arrested Penrith. So they had the bye last weekend. Um, still no Cleary, but I think, you know, rested Penrith. Sorensen back from injury is a huge inclusion. I think they're going to be too strong um, and played at Bathurst too. So a ground that they, I think most of them are familiar with. I think they pretty much all of that Penrith footy side would have played at least a, a couple of games at Penrith, uh, at, sorry, at uh, at Bathurst. Um so I think they're going to be a little bit too strong. Yeah, Penrith off a bye. I had a theory that, um, you know, after their last game against Manly, they looked like a side that were, had almost, uh, I guess their program was for to, to peak at the start of the year, get mm. those initial games out of the way, get the points under the belt, and then head into the bye and really give the boys... Because, I mean, Isaiah Yo came off with a bit of niggles. Jerome yep. Luai came off. Fisher-Harris, he didn't play as many minutes. And so I think that that was just a side that was desperate for the break. They looked tired, and understandably so. So them coming off a break, mm. I think it's going to be a very tough game for the Tigers to kind of withstand that avalanche that the Penrith Panthers are going to throw at them. Yeah, especially, mate, if they if they start hot and they score a couple early ones, yeah, um, that might just dint the confidence of, of this young West Tigers footy side. Um, yeah, I just think across the park they're going to be a little bit too strong. Now on to Titans Manly, Saturday 5.30 p.m. at Seabus Super Stadium. <laughs> uh, Campbell out with an injury. Sammy returns from injury to take his place at fullback. Fafida moves into the starting side after coming off the bench last weekend. Lodge straight back into the starting side for the Manly Seagulls after his ACL injury. Garrick Brown also returns. Saab on the wing for his first appearance since round one. Ben mm. and Sipley drop out. Uh, big question. Uh, they've decided to go with Sammy at the back instead of Brimo and Brimo at six. What are your thoughts on that? Really? Um, I actually think he he wants to play six, Brimson. Okay. Yeah, I, th- I think he's pretty keen to play there. Um, um, actually, uh, I went for a, <laughs> went for a coffee this morning after school drop off and ran into AJ Brimson and oh, no way, Sammy Verrills. Yeah, they I think they had the morning off or it might have been the day off and they were just coming up from the beach. Um, yeah, they looked up and about the boys. I know they they still haven't won a game of footy, but you know they just they said they're working hard at training. Um, you know, and they just they're just searching for that first victory, just to just to just to have a a bit of a breath and take a little bit of pressure off the entire squad. You know, they're all feeling the pressure at the moment. You know, not having won a game in this campaign so far, but um, yeah, I, look, you know, I think AJ, I think he's looking forward to the opportunity of playing six. Okay. Um, you know, I think he he really enjoys that opportunity to be a little bit closer to the footy, um, where he can get his hands on the ball. You know, one off the rock, he has the option to run, he has the option to pass, he's got a nice kicking game as well. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I think he's really looking forward to this opportunity. I think I think they're actually relishing the opportunity to take on, you know, Manly, who have been, you know, spoken about and regarded by a lot of people as 
one of the better teams in the competition so far, particularly the way they're attacking. Um, and I think also Gold Coast are thinking as well, you know, if they just get them on the right day and they can they can start really well, that they might just they might force them into a bit of panic mm. because let's let's be honest, everyone expects Manly to beat the Titans. Yeah, everyone expects them to beat the Titans, much like everyone expected Manly to beat the Dragons. Mm. So they're they're fully aware of that, and you know that's they turned in a pretty poor performance against the Dragons, and the Dragons won. Also, too, Desi. They got Desi yeah. Hasler there who has coached a handful of these Manly players and he knows what they're all about. So um, after all of that, I'm going to tip Manly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. That's I'm going to tip stuff. I'm going to tip Manly because they're just um, – yeah, I just I, – they're, they're a different side to the last couple of years. I just think they're a much stronger – like – Mentally stronger footy side, um, and yeah, I, I think they've they found a, a bit more consistency than what they've had over the past couple of years. Probably yes. a bit to do with that is because Tommy Turbo has been playing longer minutes, but mm. um, I've got Manly. Yeah, look, I've got Manly as well, and I think with Manly, okay, you've played early in the year, you got the first five six rounds out of the way, your attack is sorted, you know you can put on points. I think the focus for them now heading into this week, it's a real opportunity to set standards. So whether it's a great team or a bad, like a team not going so well, or mm. whether it's in the middle of a game and you're 16-0 up or 18-0 up, it's a real opportunity to go, no, we need to be ruthless here. We need to go up to the Gold Coast and not just win, we need to win well. If we consider ourselves a premiership threat this year, um, I think that it should be a real focus of an 80-minute performance because... Even though they've been really good this year, they haven't put together an 80-minute performance this year, Manly. And, mm -hmm. you know, Titans are a good side to do that against because the, obviously the level isn't going to be as high as some of the top-tier sides. No, I completely agree, mate. This is this is a game where they really shouldn't underestimate the Titans. Mm. Um, they need to have the mindset like, you know, they're taking on one of the top sides. Mm. You know, they, they, cannot, they cannot afford to roll up to the Gold Coast thinking, ah, here we are in sunny southeast Queensland, weather's great. Um, playing against the Titans, haven't won a game. Like we're just going to roll out and win this. Like they, they've got to have the mindset of, hey, we're coming up here to to get a job done, and that's to win a game of footy. Play it like you've played it against the top sides. Now Broncos take on the Raiders. Uh, unchanged from last week, the Broncos Reynolds and Payne has still out. Madden retains his half spot. Raiders Zach Hoskins replaced by Ata Mariota. Uh, Schiller comes onto the wing, and Albert Hopperwhite he's still recovering from burns. In a cooking accident last month, this is going to be a cracking game. What do you reckon yes. about this one, Smithy? Yeah, cracker. Um, I don't know how the Broncos are going to go playing on a Saturday. Do they? Do they? Oh, do they feel all right playing on a Saturday? Oh my! They're used to God. Thursday, Friday nights, mate. Mate, we bloody <laughs> their their whole week's going to be out of whack, mate. We've which been makes me a bit nervous. The toughest <laughs> we've been given the <laughs> toughest draw out of anyone. They just keep throwing us top dogs <laughs> after top dogs, and we're just doing our best, mate. Yep. Yep. Um, you know what? Uh, listen, mm, I think this is going to be a very, very close game. No Reynolds, no Payne Haas still. And look, they're going to have to play tough and they're going to have to control the footy. If they don't, Broncos, if they don't, then the Raiders will take it to them. Um, they'll have a crack, red hot at crack anyway. Listen, I'm going to go Broncos because they're playing at home. It's going to be a close game though. Mate, this is uh, – so at the moment, I'm going Broncos too head-to-head, -head, but the Raiders are paying $2.93. Value Ooh, there. Juicy. That is juicy as it comes. And, and like, yes. you know, what is one of the – obviously our back, the Broncos' back line is, is really good. But, mm. you know, one of our strongest suits is our forward pack. And if there is one forward pack that can match the Broncos, mm. it's a bloke with Tarpani in it that just ran for 300 metres. Uh, yes. Papali'i, it's young. Yes. Um, so, mm. mate, I think this is going to be – uh, I think there's going to be fireworks for one. Mm -hmm. And I also think that it's going to be extremely close, Matt.